Adam was being. The, the root word alig, O-L-I-G, meaning a few. What's an oligarchy? A few people can, in control. Yeah. All right? Here's what happens. We're going to disregard the cost curves for a minute, and we're going to call this our kinked demand oligopoly. This is a market in which there are relatively few sellers. Should I get it back? I said it's impossible to write these graphs, and he said I just have to write a couple of them. Yeah, I just tried to spin uh, as many lines as I can. Trying to draw this graph is a nightmare. I'm not going to ask you to draw this graph, but I'm going to ask you to understand what it's saying. Okay? So don't get bogged down, because trying to put the cost curves in the right place is just... Okay. The assumption in this thing is that there's, there's relatively few mark, few sellers, and here's my, I think, a good example. You've got a little bitty town way out in the country that's got four gas stations. And those are the only gas stations for 50 miles. Okay? So all the people residing in this area, that's the only gas stations for 50 miles. You own one of the gas stations, and I own one of the gas stations. And the way the, mark, the way the model starts, it says, suppose that the prevailing price in the market is $3.50 a gallon for gasoline. And we're all charging that. And each one of us has about one-fourth of the market. Okay? Once we know the beginning price, then the reasoning comes in. It's really kind of logical. What would you do in your gas station if I walked out there tomorrow morning and I raised my price to four dollars a gallon. What would you do? Raise to three ninety nine. Would you? No. What about the other two? If you raise your price at all to try to get close to mine, the other what are the other two guys going to be doing? They're going to be cracking a beer and laughing and say, "Look at those turkeys," because they've got all the business. So if I raise my price to four dollars, what are you going to do? Watch. Walk across the street, crack open a beer with them, and laugh at me. Why? Why are you laughing at me and my $4 price? Because we're selling it cheaper and we know they're going to come down. And how many cars are over at my gas station? Zero. Right? So, what was the economics term for it if I raise my price to $4? Stupid. Got it? Just plain stupid. <laughs> now, if I raise my price, this is me, this is my company. If I raise my price to $4, I will lose a lot of, if not all, my customers, right? So if I have a huge decrease in the number of customers, this would be my demand curve. Is that an elastic or inelastic demand curve? With a relatively small rise in price, I lose a huge volume. That's an elastic demand. And so our first observation is here that demand is elastic for an upward price change. In other words, if you raise price, you're going to lose a lot of business, and that's kind of stupid. You with me so far? We're halfway down through the model. What if you woke up tomorrow instead, and you looked outside, and Strickland had dropped his price to three dollars a gallon. What would be going on? I'd have cars lined up to save fifty cents a gallon. What would you do? You'd have to lower your price if you want to bring some of those cars over there, and some of the other two owners, by the way. And so, very quickly, we get into kind of a price war. Everybody drops down to the lowest price. And so all you guys drop down and charge $3 a gallon also. And so what happens to my sales when you also charge $3 a gallon? Do I pick up a lot of sales? Do I get a lot more cars over here at $3 when you've already also dropped your price to $3? No. In fact, I get just a slight increase in sales, so now my demand curve looks something like this. What kind of demand curve do we call it? It's really steep. An inelastic demand. So we say demand is inelastic 
for a downward price change. So what would we call that when I go out and reduce my price to three dollars? So the economics term for it. Stupid. <laughs> because now we're all down here killing ourselves at lower prices. And nobody's really picking up much more in the way of sales. So, if we know stupid is up and stupid is down, what's our general rule for running our business? Leave the damn price alone. Don't change the price. All right? That's kind of the model right there. And we'll get it real messy here in just a minute, but that's secondary, okay? The basic rule then is in an oligopoly, when you have very few competitors, you're very interdependent on each other. You depend on what the other guy's doing, and you're watching him real close. Do you think it's possible in this market that me and you and the other two sellers out here, we might go out and have a beer together tonight? What would we talk about? We talk about the business, wouldn't we? There's one bar. Huh? There's only one bar in that town. Well, it, no, it's probably 12 bars in there. You know, 12 <laughs> bars, 22 churches, and 19 real estate businesses. One of, one of my businesses that I had before, I, I had a market just like that. And as soon as I dropped my price, I had it at, at 250 for the product that I was selling. As soon as I dropped it to 200 every single one of my competitors dropped it down to 200 too. Exactly. They had to. Because yeah. otherwise, they're just giving, giving you business. Well, I'm telling you that the four of us are going to go out and we're going to have a cold beer or supper tonight. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about this. What if we went out there and all four of us raised the price of gas to $5? Would we have the community where we want them? They really need that gas. You think they're going to drive another 50 miles to go get cheaper gas? And if we all stay with a $5 price, will we be doing pretty good? Oh, hell yes. Will we be popular? Not at all. Who cares? Okay? Would, would businesses do that? Would they go out and, and price fix that way, conspire together? Yes, they would. We call it collusion. And so we always worry about collusion in an oligopoly. And within the most American markets, it's illegal. But within an international market, it's not. You ever heard of an outfit called OPEC? The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries? OPEC has a headquarters in Vienna, Austria, and they all sit down there together every once in a while, have a little meeting, and come out and tell the world. We've decided we're going to fix the price for oil at this much. Hope you like it. Bye, love and kisses. They're very open with it because it's not illegal internationally. But there is always the potential danger or threat of collusion when you have an oligopoly with relatively few sellers. But let's take it one more step. We all agree to $5. And we all run out tomorrow morning and you raise your prices, all of you, to $5. But I don't. How will I do? I'll do real good. If I cheat on the collusion agreement we have, I can do real well for how long? In this case, a very short period of time when you see what I'm doing, and then you will what? You will reduce your price back down to where mine is, right? What else will you do? Probably show up with three or four guys nine times my size and kick my butt. No argument. But that's, you see what oligopoly is. We're all in this together. Don't anybody rock the boat. And in fact, why don't we all sit down and try to fix this to our advantage? And how then do we compete? If in fact we're going to compete, but we can't change the price because we'll kill ourselves. How do we compete with each other? Maybe just more so inside of customer service and Give marketing. Offers. Customer service, whatever. Give offers. Give offers, special deals, advertising. advertising. What would you, any specific suggestions on advertising and marketing? Selling liquor in your gas station. Sell liquor in the gas station. Right after church, right? <laughs> Starting this soon, they're going to change the blue out here. Yep, they're going to change the laws here in this community where you can buy liquor before 1 o'clock on Sunday. I'll tell you what I'm going to do at my gas station. I'm going to hire full service attendants, gas station attendants, who will come out and clean your windshield, check your oil, fill up your fuel tank, 
and they're all going to be between 18 and 25 <laughs> years old. Really good looking guys and girls wearing almost nothing. How are you going to compete against that? Eh? It's kind of like monopolistic competition. You compete like crazy, except in here you don't compete on a price basis. You don't try to cut prices. You okay with that? Yes, sir. So, for you were saying the collusion is illegal in the local business? It, within the United States, most forms of collusion is illegal because it's against the interest of the consumers. So, like, some, like out in Bell, if there was four gas stations and they were to do that? They would be violating the law. And every state's got their own state attorney general who come in and investigate it on the state level in addition to the federal ones. Okay. Okay? Now, don't try to draw this. I'm going to just show you this real quick, okay? What this is considered to be is the intersection of two demand curves. This is demand curve one. This is demand curve two. Each one's got a marginal revenue curve. And so you take the two marginal revenue curves and you run them down here and then about here. And you get this funky looking marginal revenue or marginal revenue curve that's not even connected between these two points and you connect it. And this little range in here, anytime the marginal cost curve changes, so the company's costs go up or go down, this is still alpha, 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 and they all correspond to the same output and the same price should be right there. And what this, all this messy drawing is trying to show you is when you have this kind of oligopoly, when costs go up, they don't raise their price to try to cover the costs because you know, they get a, what will start losing. And they don't drop price when costs go down because they'll be at a price war. So even though the costs go up and down, the prices remain constant within this range of costs. Okay? So just because your costs went up, you can't be raising your price to cover that or you lose your customer. And just because costs went down, you don't want to drop your price because everybody else will. So you eat the costs when they go up, and you party when they go down because you're making more profit. That's pretty much it. And that's why we don't want to draw this. It's really messy. But the concept is pretty simple. That's kink demand oligopoly. Questions? Comments? Cool.